Is the S23 Ultra a better phone than the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Well, from the note borrow design and the powerful speakers to the USB-C port and the 100X moon faking camera, yes, but it's definitely a bit complicated. Now before you get triggered and rage comment because I said the words moon faking camera, stop because I definitely prefer what Samsung is doing compared to the iPhone's potato cam photo, but that's not the end of the story. In this video, I'm gonna get real honest and admit that yes, I have a personal bias towards iPhones. Since I've been an iPhone user for almost a decade and I can't let go of how well it works with my MacBook Pro, but removing all iOS bias, I have to admit that the S23 Ultra is a better phone. There, I said it. Whew, okay, that was painful, but let's move on to the meat. The 14 Pro Max basically looks the same as it has since the iPhone 11 Pro, save for the dynamic island that's honestly a bit too big and the camera bump that's getting endlessly bigger, which I actually like. The more bump, the merrier, right? But honestly, the design of the S23 Ultra takes the cake with the camera bump nicely planted onto a solid piece of flush glass across the entire back, which is what I wanted Apple to do with the upcoming iPhone 15 Pro. No, really, these are the renders I imagined and asked Shailesh to create camera bumps on a flat piece of flush glass, but no, the official case cats have leaked and we're getting the same camera bump design once again. So yes, the S23 Ultra wins in terms of the design and I actually really like this new matte red finish and I'm really glad that they discontinued the Note series and simply gave that design language over to the S23 Ultra. And the real cherry on top is the fact that the S Pen is once again integrated into the design, which is actually really handy for filling out PDFs. So with that said, it's basically now the best traditional Android phone design out there. Now, Apple's method of removing the notch and replacing it with the dynamic island was a genius move because it keeps the Face ID sensors next to the camera while mixing it up and making it look new, not to mention the various benefits of displaying useful information like timers, navigation, and even things like sports scores. But to be real, Samsung's little cutout is definitely the cleaner option and it's much less intrusive. However, Face ID on the iPhone is a million times better than Samsung's weak fake recognition, and I don't like fingerprint sensors. Sorry, Samsung fanboys, but you can't convince me otherwise. Anyway, the displays on both of these are great. We've got high refresh rate, high contrast ratios, great colors, high brightness. They're equally great. Yes, the iPhone technically can get brighter, but it's only when you're outside and using auto brightness, which I can't stand using, so to me, it doesn't really matter. They both get a win. Now, before we get into the cameras, as well as the fake moonshot controversy, I've gotta talk about the number one worst thing about the iPhone, and that is the lightning port. But first, I've gotta talk about this, the Magic Stand case from our partner Case Coup, which basically combines the best and most wanted aspects of a case into one. You've not only got a great and durable design with strong MagSafe magnets built in, but the MagSafe ring is literally on a hinge, so you can use it as a finger grip or a 40 to 120 degree stand for watching videos, movies, anything else you want. And the best part is that it folds back completely flush with the case so it doesn't interfere with any of your MagSafe chargers or accessories. So check out this brand new frosted color and all the discount info using the link in the description below. Now back to the lightning port, the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max are plagued by it because Apple has continued to increase the camera quality with features like 48 megapixel Pro Raw photos that come with massive file sizes, as well as finally adding 4K resolution to their cinematic video mode, which by the way, I absolutely love because it looks like real professional video footage with blur in the background. So recently I filmed an entire video's A-roll using my iPhone's 4K cinematic mode, and knowing that lightning is limited to incredibly slow USB 2.0 transfer speeds, I decided to try and airdrop the four gig 
file to my Mac at the office. Well, that was a mistake because it took forever since it needed to process the entire video into a format that the Mac could recognize due to using cinematic mode, so it ended up randomly failing the airdrop. So then I tried connecting my iPhone to my Mac with the lightning cable and importing the file, but nope, it said I had to process the files first, which was taking forever and it just didn't work for some reason. Then finally, I ended up trying to airdrop it again and it worked, but it was of course very slow because of that big file size. Now in contrast, the USB-C port on the S23 Ultra makes this process so easy because even on a Mac, you simply connect it, switch to file transfer mode, and bam, all your files show up, allowing you to simply drag and drop them onto your computer within seconds, thanks to the blazing fast USB speed that runs circles around the USB 2.0 limitation of Lightning. And that's actually not the worst part. Did you know that Apple's 2017 iPad Pro came with a lightning port that was dramatically faster than the one in this new 14 Pro Max? Yes, Apple screwed us over with the same slow lightning port as before, even though lightning is capable of faster speeds like on the iPad. Anyway, I'll stop my rant there and say that I'm very glad the upcoming iPhone 15 lineup is getting USB-C across the board and the iPhone 14 will forever be known as the last iPhone with lightning. Farewell, we won't miss you. Now, as far as the performance of the chips, yes, the iPhone's A16 chip is technically faster with the S23 Ultra pretty much matching up in terms of GPU performance, but they're both so fast that it doesn't even matter. They're neck and neck in speed tests online, and in terms of gaming performance, Dame Tech tested them out, and there's basically no discernible difference between them other than heat. And finally, let's finish off with the cameras. Samsung's new 200 megapixel sensor is great, but it's actually a toss up with the iPhone 14 Pro's 48 megapixel camera in terms of quality. Probably because it's a new sensor and we've gotta wait for some more software updates. Now other than that, the regular 12 megapixel main camera photos are great on both of them. The ultra wide photos are very similar as well. And even the selfies are comparable. They're just both great cameras. Now where the Samsung actually takes the win is of course the 10X optical telephoto camera where it clearly and easily beats the iPhone's 3X lens and there's just no competition. That right there is the biggest downfall of the 14 Pro Max and because of it, the S23 Ultra does have a better camera system overall. Now, as far as the moonshot controversy, Mr. Who's the Boss proved that Samsung is intentionally faking moonshot photos in a recent video, even showing that they're overlaying sharp crater textures, which you can see right here. He even created a fake moon with a paper cutout, and the S23 Ultra did its best to turn it into a nice looking moonshot. So for those of you who are saying it's the same AI processing that every other phone does, that is completely false. However, the truth is that regardless of how Samsung is doing it, the S23 Ultra pumps out incredible looking moonshots that the 14 Pro Max couldn't even dream of taking, so it's a major benefit for the hardware itself. So with all of that said, yes, the S23 Ultra is a better phone than the 14 Pro Max, but that doesn't mean I'm switching. I love the iOS software that I'm used to. I love the MagSafe feature. I love the ecosystem, and I especially love the 4K cinematic video mode that blows away the competition. Now, if you disagree with me, let me know down in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed it, click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.